All right, so with what you know now, you could actually make a rudimentary choose-your-own-adventure game, just like those old books with a uh, turn to page 105 and have multiple branching plot lines based upon player input. But there's a few things we can do to really emphasize the interactive part of interactive fiction. So let's start here in the crypt passage. And our call to action here for the player is that they quickly find the door and exit the crypt. Well, I don't want them to exit too quickly. In fact, I want to make the player look around first before this line even pops up. And that is where this thing called macros comes in. Twine has a large number of these macro elements that have different functionality, and I believe they're also different based upon the story format that you choose. So to really get the full functionality out of Twine, you should probably look at the Twine cookbook, or in this case, the Sugar Cube version 2 documentation. I will provide links to both in the description of the video, but for now we'll just use a very simple yet useful macro, and it is called Link Replace. So we're going to come above the link here and make some space. And the way you create a macro in SugarCube is by using two left arrows and two right arrows. And then in between these is where we will put the names that create the macro. In this case, it is link replace. So after link replace, inside of quotation marks, we're going to put some text that the player can interact with. In this case, we're going to say look around. And then to close this macro, we need to come below this passage link, do arrows, forward slash, link, replace, and write arrows. Now if you know anything about HTML coding, this will look very familiar to you, because it is very reminiscent of tags in HTML. You have the opening, and you have the closing, indicated by this forward slash. Now what happens in this particular instance is that with link replace you have your initial text in these quotation marks and then when this is clicked it is replaced with whatever happens in between these two tags. So in this case I want to add a little bit more descriptive text so I'm going to come below and I'm going to paste in some text here. You discover crumbling remains of dead bodies. You are trapped inside a crypt and then you quickly find the door and exit the crypt outside. So let's go ahead and close this and run it and we see now that the link to the outside of the crypt is no longer there. All we see now is the command, look around. And when we click that, it gives us the new descriptive text that we have here, and then the link to exit the crypt. You'll also notice that there's quite a bit of space here now. It jumped the text down from look around, which was this line right here. We'll look at that in a minute. So let's go outside the crypt, and then we see we're outside the crypt. Okay, so let's go back into the passage here. And the reason that when we clicked look around, it jumped down a line and created a gap between these two text blocks is because Twine renders each line of text here as a carriage return, even if it does not actually show the code itself here. So basically what Twine is doing is it's saying, well, hey, there's two spaces in between these lines, even though it doesn't show this link replace. Fortunately, there is a very simple way to get rid of that, and it is to add a backslash to the end of the line. And we should probably do that here, too. It's really going to become important to remember to add these at the end of our lines, especially of macros and things that will not be shown on screen. So now let's go back and look at this again. Look around, and you can see now there is only the one space between the text. Okay, so now there's another little bit of temporary text I would like to add to give it a little bit more atmosphere in the game. We're going to now go to the outside of the crypt passage, and just above the text here, I'm going to add a line, rushing outside, the crypt door slams shut behind you. Now if we go right into the game, look around, leave the crypt, we see rushing outside, the door slams shut behind you. Okay, cool. So if we go north and then say, come back south, rushing outside, the crypt door slams shut behind you. Obviously, we don't want that every time we walk through here. We only want it the first time we exit the crypt. Now, there is this macro called has visited, and it's basically for this purpose. It reads to see whether the player has been in a passage before, and then it will do whatever we want to happen next. However, I found it doesn't really work, and it's probably better to learn how to set up a system for this on our own anyway, because we'll need it later when we start doing the item pickup. The way we're going to do this is with a variable, and a variable is simply a piece of data with a value that can change. 
And the preferred way to get this started inside of Twine is to create a new passage with this button down here. Open it up, and we are going to give it a title of Story, capitalized, and in it for initialize. Now, this is actually important. You want this file to be titled exactly the same way, because this is a built-in name that Twine will recognize and run prior to the actual game itself. So all the data that we can front load onto the game will be in this passage. And to create a variable, it's actually pretty simple. We just edit this here, and we start with our left arrows and say set, and then give it a name. Now a variable name inside of Sugarcube begins with the dollar sign, and we will call this start. And we will say set start to false and then close it off with the right arrows. So basically here we have the name of the variable and the value, which in this case is false, and a true false variable is a Boolean variable. That's not particularly important here, but just in case you come across it, you'll know what it means. And before we close this, I also want to add a tag here. Now, tagging your passages allows you to organize them, and it also allows you to use the search function inside of Twine to find certain things. In this particular case, we're going to use it for color coding. So I'm going to add a new tag, and I'm going to call it data. You have to be careful here because some tags actually do have a reserved name inside of Twine, which means that it can change the functionality of some of the elements of your passage. For example, if I said no BR, this stands for no break, which means that there would be no line breaks between any of the lines of text inside the passage. But data is a safe one to use, and I will add it, and I will hit this arrow, and I will give it a red color. So let's close it. And now you can see that there's a red bar on the side of this, and this will just be a visual thing to show us that it is a separate passage. It does not have story elements in it. It's just for data. So I'm going to move this over here, sort of out of the way, and now we're going to go back into outside of the crypt. By using that Boolean variable, we can now make conditions that will show or hide this line of text. I'm going to create some space here, and I'm going to say if dollar sign $start is false. Put that ending on it, and I'm going to put a backslash on it to prevent it from having an extra carriage return in there. And then I'm going to come to the end of that line, create some space, and I'm going to close that if tag, again giving it a backslash. So now what this if statement does is it will check to see the value of the variable, and then it will do whatever is in between these tags, in this case show this line of text. Since we initialized the variable to be false, of course it will show this the first time we are here. So we need to then prevent it from happening again every time we come through, and we simply do that by changing this to true. So still in between the if tags here, we will then say set that start variable to true. And then make sure you give it that backslash. Okay, so to review, if start is false, it will show rushing outside the crypt door slam shut behind you. It will then set the variable to true, and then it'll close that out and continue on. So let's close this, and we'll see it in action. We look around, we exit the crypt, Rushing outside, the crypt door slams shut behind you. Let's go north, and let's go back south to the crypt, and that text is no longer there. So now that we know how to manipulate text, we're going to go through and start creating the framework for our items.